How can AI learn to solve Sudoku puzzles, navigate maze, or approach new tasks by generalizing from just a handful of examples? Tackling these reasoning challenges involves recognizing patterns to form abstractions, making logical inferences, and refining solutions through iteration. While such tasks are intuitive for humans, they remain difficult for AI systems. Recently, a paper made waves in the AI community. On inductive reasoning benchmarks like ArcHEI, this model outperforms leading large language models such as DeepSeq R1, Cloud, and O3. Its results on puzzles like Sudoku and Maze are particularly impressive. Other models struggle to solve these complex symbolic tree search problems, often failing entirely. What's even more impressive is that this hierarchical reasoning model achieves this with just 27 million parameters. Yes, that's an M for million, not a B for billion. Despite its small size, this model is able to tackle complex reasoning tasks after training on just 1,000 examples. But how does it work? Let's start with the problem formulation. Consider a Sudoku puzzle. We can represent the 9x9 grid as a sequence of numbers. We represent the missing entries in the puzzles with the number 0. The solution to the puzzle is also expressed as a sequence of numbers. Our goal is to train a model that can map an input puzzle to its corresponding solution. To do this, we provide a model with example puzzles and train it to minimize the difference between its predicted solutions and the correct answers. First, we convert the input puzzle into a format that the model can process, typically using an embedding layer. Once the model has processed the input, an output head translates its internal representation back into the predicted solution. But what model should we use? A common approach is to stack multiple transformer blocks. These blocks typically consist of multi-head self-attention, feedful neural networks, and normalization layers. If we look at the accuracy on Sudoku as we change the number of model parameters, an interesting pattern emerges. Simply increasing the transformer's width does not lead to better performance. Instead, increasing the model depth is critical for solving this reasoning task effectively. However, making the model deeper also greatly increases the total number of parameters. How do we overcome this challenge? One widely used approach is chain of thought reasoning. Here, the model explicitly writes out its reasoning steps in natural language. This allows the model to perform multi-step complex reasoning by breaking the problem into intermediate steps. However, train of thought reasoning has some notable drawbacks. Errors made early in the reasoning process can propagate and affect later steps. Additionally, training models to generate detailed reasoning traces is computationally intensive and requires large amount of data. As an alternative, we can use a recurrent network. In a recurrent architecture, each block reuses the same set of parameters. By repeatedly applying a recurrent block, we can effectively achieve arbitrary depths at test time, since the same computation is on roll over many steps. However, as the hidden representations are updated over many iterations, the model can gradually lose track of the original problem context. To address this, it's important for the model to revisit the input while reasoning. One effective approach is to inject the embedded input representation into each recurrent block at every iteration. This technique is often referred as recall or input injection in loop transformers. It helps the model maintain awareness of the initial problem context throughout the reasoning process. The model can iteratively improve its solution. Compared to standard transformers, recurrent models with input injection have demonstrated higher accuracy. However, if we keep increasing the number of iterations in the recurrent network, performance eventually plateau and can even decline as the model gets deeper. So, how can we address this limitation? This leads us to the core idea of this paper. The standard recurrent model can be interpreted as low-level modules that perform fast, detailed computations. All these low-level modules are recurrent blocks that share the same parameters. To enhance reasoning, we introduce a high-level recurrent model on top, designed for more abstract, deliberate processing. 
Like low-level modules, these high-level modules are also recurrent blocks, but with their own distinct set of parameters. The two recurrent models are coupled. During each low-level iteration, the hidden state of the high-level module, denoted as ZH, is used as a conditioning input when updating the hidden state of the error module. Importantly, ZH remains unchanged throughout a cycle of T low-level steps. After every T low-level steps, the H module updates its states using the final state of the error module from that cycle. The H module captures information over longer time horizons to build abstract representations, while the error modules handle immediate, detailed computations. The overall process consists of n high-level cycles, each containing t low-level steps. In total, the model performs n times t iterations. Let's see how well this works. Here is a comparison of accuracy on challenging Sudoku problems as the model depth increases. The hierarchical reasoning model stands out, achieving near-perfect accuracy and outperforming previous methods. It's incredible. However, training this kind of model presents unique challenges. When we iterate the recurrent blocks many times, standard training requires backpropagating gradients through every step in time, which leads to high computational and memory demands. However, once the hidden states of both high-level and low-level modules have converged to a fixed point, we only need to backpropagate a single time step at the end, rather than through every intermediate step. This greatly reduces memory usage since it avoids the need of unrolled computation through time. To further boost the effective model depths, we can scale inference compute by performing multiple forward passes of the HRM model. Each pass is called a segment. To make the training tractable, the paper used deep supervision. This means that the gradients from each segment are prevented from flowing back into previous segments. By doing so, the model uses a one-step gradient approximation using a recursive deep supervision setup. Finally, not every problem requires the maximum number of reasoning steps. To optimize computational efficiency during training and inference, the model adaptively determines how much computation to allocate for each problem. Specifically, at the end of each segment, the model predicts whether to continue or stop the recurrence. We implement this by applying a linear layer followed by a sigmoid function. And that's how the HRM work. It's important to note that unlike general purpose large language models, HRM is trained for a specific reasoning task. Even so, it's remarkable that a compact model can tackle these difficult reasoning problems with just 1000 training examples. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.